Good morning. Brooklyn Legal Services Corp A is here with, with the tenants today uh, representing tenants from 606, 604 Clinton Street. We're here with our senator, our assembly member, and our council member, and you'll hear from them shortly. We are suing NYCHA in housing court because the tenants are facing a number of horrendous repair issues that have been long-standing and persistent. For example, the incinerator was broken for months, which resulted in unbearable smell of rotten garbage and infestation of flies in the building. There is garbage everywhere. No one maintains the building except for its tenants. The buildings have problems with water leaks, pipes bursting, water coming up from individual drains and down from the roof. The water leaks in the buildings have caused building-wide pest problems, cockroaches, ants, centipedes, rats. The tenants are also facing security issues with building entrance doors locked, being broken, the door itself not closing, which results in people coming into the building, living in the hallways, and on the roof. And yet, the most outrageous issue is the giant hole in front of the building, which floods. Brooklyn A, with political and community allies, are here to fight with the tenants to protect their rights to live in decent homes. And now I'd like to introduce to you one of the tenants, the first one, Ruben Morales. Mr. Morales? Well, first of all, I'd like to say, my name is Ruben. I'm a 60-year-plus resident here in Red Hook House. I've been in the Red Hook House in East since I was, you know, a little, a little guy. Um, NYCHA has neglected to provide with the services that are commonly known as simple service. Uh, things such as, uh, like you said, neglecting, exposed wiring, these apartments are way below the code. All we ask NYCHA to do is bring it up to code. Give us, you know, the opportunity of living like human beings. Not with this infestation, this security issue, people using our roofs, they're finding feces and needles. This is a serious issue. This is a family oriented neighborhood. We have children that live here. We don't need strangers running up and down our building. Fix our apartments, NYCHA. I mean, you got people sitting underneath their toilets with umbrellas. If it's broke, NYCHA, yo, fix my apartment. Enough is enough already. We need this work to get done. Yes, you can spend billions of dollars doing construction in the outside. What happens to those on the inside? With all this dirt, everything is dirty. This, this dirt rises up to the sky because in our apartments. Enough is enough. Housing, NYCHA, fix our apartments. We are tired, all right? We cannot live like this. We should not live like this. Do your part, we're doing ours. We don't neglect payments or nothing. We want your payment, it's there. Give us our services that we require that are by law supposed to be done. NYCHA, come up, bring up, bring our standards up to code. I want to thank you for your time and hearing me out. Uh, Ruben, spell your name. Ruben, spell your name. Uh, my name is Ruben. R-U-B-E-N. And spell Morales. And Morales is M-O-R-A-L-E-S. Thank you all for your time. Let me speak out. Thank you. Uh, Lucy Martinez, next tenant. Good morning, all. Thank you all for being here and being supported. Uh, my name is Lucy Martinez. I am a resident of 606 Clinton Street. I'm here on, on behalf of myself and all of the uh, Red Hook community uh, housing residents. Uh, we all, all we want is just to have our apartments repaired, okay, so we can live like human beings, like. Uh, Mr. Morales said. Um, we want to preserve the buildings and we want we demand funding to help fix our apartments. Okay, so we, we can live decent. Okay, we all pay our rent, we all deserve the service. Uh, you know, that's all I have to say. You know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Williams. 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 Mr. Williams.
alone and thanks again to the new councilmen, senators, and all that's here. Uh, my name is Richie, a resident of 606. Uh, we here, as Mr. Robinson said, for the apartment repairs, uh, the dirtiness all around the area. Uh, we have big construction trucks that come through here at all the time also, which we, we have none but most of the kids in the area. Repairs are not being done like they say. Uh, we just in a filthy environment right now. And as as far as it's going right now, people is moving out of here and they have no place to go as it is. They're struggling. Everybody's struggling right now. And I thank all y'all very much for having us here and having y'all being here to help us with our situation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Assembly woman Mitch McTainus. Assembly woman Mitch Good morning everyone. Uh, my name is Marcella Matanez and I'm the incoming assembly member for this district. I come from 10 years worth of organizing and advocating for tenants, not just in my district, not just borough-wide, but statewide. What is happening here today is not new and is not common, unfortunately. But we must remember that landlords have a responsibility, that when they are renting an apartment, that they are guaranteeing that the apartment is in good health, in, in good condition, no need of repair, it's clean, it's hygienic, and it's safe for a human being to live in. That responsibility is not just for the apartment, but they have a responsibility to repairs and maintenance for the building as well. What we are seeing here today is a common tactic along landlords where they tend to ignore basic needs and it's a form of harassment. It's not just the repairs that they need. Folks don't have cooking gas to cook meals for their, for their families. This is unacceptable, it's illegal, and it's morally wrong. And we are here to say that we are not gonna take this anymore. We are educating the tenants, we're helping them organize, and we are looking at all their legal options. What we're used to seeing is big landlords come into gentrifying communities, and the first thing that they do is they wanna fix the hallways and the outside appearance. And that's just cosmetic fix fixtures that they do, and what they're not seeing is the issues and the ongoing repairs that are needed for tenants that have been living here. This is enough. We are not gonna take this anymore. We are banding together at the different levels of government to bring a stop to this. And we are gonna continue to organize and we're gonna continue to support the tenants. Thank you. Uh, we want to hear now from Ms. Dolores Walker. You can keep the sign or you can ask it. Hello, Bree. It's a mess. Uh, uh, all over the place. You know, we've been living in that place all our lives and everything. And this building for one mask, everything, and our food and everything. It's not right. You pay rent and everything, and we are not supposed to be ridiculed like this. You like dogs and stuff. They treat us like animals. You know, we can't live in a community like this. This is not good for the United States. This is not good for the projects and everything. And I've been in the projects all my life. I've been in here 63 years. Nothing was like this. You know, it's slow wars. They treat us like we don't even exist anymore. And that's what I gotta say. Everybody, you gotta listen to the community. We all the community, we all the help one another. But you live like this is not supposed to happen. This building's contact has been built by eight months. That's not supposed to happen to nobody. You gotta take our garbage down and stuff, live like kids and everything. I'm fed up! That's it, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. All right, yes, yes, yes. I want to thank y'all for coming out today. And also, Ms. Dolores, thank you for that impassioned speech. Like, people are fed up. This is, this is ridiculous at this point. And I'm here in solidarity because housing, stable housing is the bedrock of any stable society. And like, when that falls through, that's just a domino effect of all the things that start to start to you know 
collapse around you. And you know, I remember being, uh, you know, a, a teacher before I was a legislator and seeing the effects of not having stable housing on my students. What that would do to them. Coming to school tired because they didn't have a, a secure place to sleep every night. Coming to school hungry because they didn't have that stability. When you lose stable housing, that messes up everything else. And, and when I'm hearing from my constituents that you know they have to experience uh, filth, uh, dirt feces, roaches, rats, God knows what else. That's a crisis to me. Or when they have outages such that, you know, they might not have heat in the winter or they can't cook. When they can't cook, in the midst of a pandemic where food insecurity hit working class people of color the hardest, that's a crisis to me. So we desperately need these, uh, these outages and these problems fixed, and we need them fixed now. And I also just gotta say out to the federal government, that infrastructure bill you're about to pass, you're about to pass two, three trillion dollars, make sure all of NYCHA gets all the money so we don't get to this crisis moment again. We need all that money so people don't have to stay out here, don't even have to do this in the first place. Housing should just work. It shouldn't be at the point where you need to be doing all of this. So let's get that done. Let's take care of the people in this community. Buenos dias, everyone. I'm Carlos Benchaca, City Council Member representing Red Hook. These are the voices that you have just heard. When you're hearing Lucy talk about the fact that she's taping up the compactor so that the roaches, the gnats, all that smell that has been brewing because the compactor is down, that's what we're talking about right now. These lives are being impacted, not just here on Clinton Street, but across all of Red Hook, across all of NYCHA. And the organizing that's been happening here over the last years with the Red Hook Initiative and the Justice Center is getting to a point where the Brooklyn Legal Services now is making a demand. They're taking this to court and we're saying yes, we're standing with the tenants. What I'm also here to talk about is the fact that the city government, the state government, and the federal government can work together. That's why you're seeing the partnership here, and that is our province. Part of that is ensuring that fully funded NYCHA actually happens in the state, the federal, and the city budget. The city budget is about to get negotiated. I want to ensure that the city does its part, but all of the city government pieces have to do their part. Also, I am proposing a resolution to support Janaris's, State Senator Janaris's bill, 9086. This is the utility, uh, this is NYCHA Utility Reimbursement Act. This allows for tenants, like the ones that you're hearing today, that says the compactor is down, I can't cook because the gas is down, for them to get a reduction in their rent. That is the power of the people going into government to ensure that the city responds, that the state responds, that the federal government responds. That's why we are here. Thank you so much. Question on that. So if people aren't getting the basic services, whether it's gas or water or whatever, should they just stop paying rent? No, that's the thing. That's so um, maybe the lawyer can talk a little bit about that. That's a legal process. That's that's a very complicated piece. What this bill would do is allow for a process so the tenant can actually hold that those those dollars or get reimbursed automatically. That's part of the Utility Act. That's why the City Council is going to hear it and pass it to support the state. You have state legislators here that are in support of that too. We want to make sure that we're sending this message loud and clear so that the reduction actually happens, so that when they're paying rent, because you just heard them. Mr. Morales was talking about they pay rent every single month without the utilities that they need to have dignity in their affordable housing. Is a rent strike possible if, if you don't get what you want? Again, I, this, this is kind of connected to the legal, the legal process, so I want to make sure that the, the tenants can talk about their legal demand, but this is a lawsuit in housing court, uh, and that's what we're here to support to ensure that the, that the process knows, the court knows that we're in support, and the Justice Center is a part of this as well, uh, and so there's a lot of options essentially is what I'm saying, and I don't know exactly what the process is. Carlos, Carlos, one, one more question. Yeah. What about RAD? How do we keep these buildings out of the RAD system? Right. Yeah, we do not want RAD in Red Hook. Am I right? We do not want RAD in Red Hook. So part of that is organizing to ensure that the city, the state, and the federal government do not privatize our public housing. The promise of public housing is here. It is in shambles. What it needs is fully funded NYCHA right now. And that needs to come from the city, that needs to come from the state, and that needs to come from the federal government. That's how we make NYCHA whole. And push RAD out. This is a, an HP action. We're asking that um, repairs get done and we, we're we not advocating at this moment that tenants hold back on their rent. We think 
NYCHA can step up and deliver on the services that it needs to be here so that people have a decent life in this place. Uh, and, and so can you give us details of the lawsuit itself? When did you file it? Where did you file it? It's about to be filed any day now. I'm a community organizer with Brooklyn Legal Services Corp A, not a lawyer, but we're about to sign, fill, deliver it any day now, whether tomorrow or the very next day. To? To housing court. Brooklyn Housing Court? Yes. And once this lawsuit is delivered, what's the next step for the tenants? The tenants are going to watch and see when the repairs get done, uh, ready to testify. We're pushing the judge to make this mandatory repairs as urgent as possible. They can't wait any, more, any further. And, and how long have you, has all this been an issue? Is it years, decades? How long? Decades. decades. Long time. Generation. Uh, Generation. Oh, they just didn't fix it. They don't do much. They get the yeah. and we, they We've heard eight it. months, a year. Yeah. It's just a very long yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. More than a year. How long, sir? Uh, it's been in over at least three years or better. And it also, when you put in the ticket for a repair, they drop them. Yes. They yes. drop, they close them, as you say. They close them. And you don't know about it until after you call to find out uh, you got the ticket number and everything at the office. They tell you, well, it's been dropped. So now you got to call back to the 707 number to get another ticket number and everything, and that takes more days and weeks to come along before somebody shows up. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's truly, really bad out in there. Tickets get dropped. Yeah, yeah they constantly get dropped. The tenants have been very patient. They're not asking for a mansion. They're simply asking for a decent place to live in. True. True. Can't take it no more. This is it. This is the last floor. We did everything. Alright, it's us go. Let's go. Okay, oh, nice job. Yes. Fix our apartment. Fix our apartment. Fix our apartment. Fix our apartment. We're fired up. Can't take it no more. 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 Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Hey, uh, I'm sorry. Let's see what we can get out of